Hello and welcome to Intuitive Astrology with Molly McCord. Thank you for joining me. Today is December 11th, 2019, and we're going to take a look at the astrological energies through December 18th. Now, the middle of December has a lot of energy. Perhaps you're feeling that in your life and in your world. There's a lot going on, a lot happening and moving forward. As of this Friday, December 13th, we will have Chiron in Aries stationing direct. And at that point, all planets will be direct except for Uranus in Taurus, which will station direct in January, January 10th at 8.48 p.m. So it's important to know that we have a lot of forward moving energy at this time. And that is such a clear signal to keep going forward, to do what you need to do right now, to finish up this year and this decade with clarity, peace, and the best resolution you can find within yourself. There is an energy here that supports what's coming next and that there are big energy changes on the way as we move into eclipse season. Now, the next eclipse is on December 25th, 26th, so Christmas and Boxing Day, and it is a Capricorn new moon solar eclipse. It's conjunct Jupiter and conjunct the south node. And so the south node is always about endings, completions, resolutions. But this energy is of a new moon solar eclipse, which is of beginnings. So we have a changeover happening the end of this month with this eclipse. There's a sense of, okay, what's done is done. And now there is a new chapter beginning. So it's really amazing how this lines up with entering into a new decade. Now, for those of you who listen to Monday's podcast about the December astrology, 1212 portal, and healing the Atlantis wound, I'm so happy that this information has been supporting you and that it resonates. And part two will be released on Friday, December 13th. And it goes into the second half of December's astrology, where the Capricorn energies are quite strong. And we also talk about the significance of Saturn returning to 20 degrees of Capricorn. So that is coming up on Friday's special bonus episode. I also share more about healing the Atlantis wound. And I hope that it supports you in understanding any of the cycles and healing energies you've been moving through. I know it's been such a big time for so many people. So many of us, myself included, have been experiencing very big release points. And that's one of the strong energies here of December, what you are releasing, what you have been moving through to let go of, but you've had to do so responsibly. There's no shortcuts. This Capricorn energy makes us stay the course. We have to play the game, so to speak. We have to follow the rules, uh, follow legalities, be very mindful of what we're choosing and what we're doing because there is a mastery energy that's in effect here. And mastery requires more from us. A being in our strength, integrity, truth, and knowingness. So as I look at the energies of this next week, we have the sun in Sagittarius, now traveling with Mercury and Sagittarius behind the sun. And this is an energy of the vision, the hope, the possibilities. Sagittarius energy takes us higher and expands us. It's a time of learning. What did I learn this year? What did I learn in the past year and the past decade? Now, both Mercury and the sun in Sagittarius are traveling behind Jupiter, where Jupiter was in Sagittarius for a full year, highlighting certain areas of your life that you were ready to grow and understand at a higher level. You were understanding more about what was possible, where you had limited yourself, and hopefully restructuring your belief systems, your belief in yourself, your belief in the universe, your belief in what's possible in this life. 
And this has meant to be a positive, uplifting energy. Because on one hand, you could be going through a lot of intense healing, intense karmic release, intense endings. Uh, some part of your life could have felt very... I, I just feel like this weight, this weight, and it could be the weight of a despair or the weight of something being very difficult and challenging. But then we've had the energy of Sagittarius asking us to look above and beyond, to remember that there are unlimited possibilities in the universe. There are unlimited ways that energies can shift and change. And how are you growing through this? What have you learned? What have you come to understand? I feel that many of the stories that have been playing out have been very karmic in nature, meaning it's lifetimes of energies that were stuck and they came to a head. I kept getting the image of layers of stories, and that's why it can feel so freaking intense that it's not just one lesson. It's almost like seven lessons at once. Like this whole serving, it's like a full plate of lessons. And I know that for many people who have very strong energies of, of healing right now, you've had to do more than you thought you could do. And I'm feeling like there's been a lot of loss. And that loss is through that south node in Capricorn, the loss of a way of life, the loss of an understanding of yourself in the world, the loss of your professional identity, uh, the, the loss of what you had built, the loss of what you were accomplishing, and on and on. But I want to offer you something that I hope helps you reconnect with faith and hope and a sense of trust in yourself is that whenever we have these times of loss, they are hard and intense. And I certainly do not mean to diminish that. I've been through big periods of loss in my own life, so I completely understand how it takes time to move through these energies, to move through the feelings, to move through the process. Uh, all the things that your mind contemplates, almost like that, hamster in the wheel where you can circulate. And if I had only done this, I wouldn't be in this situation. If I had only chosen this and not that, it would have been a different outcome. But please know that when we are here to heal something spiritually, energetically, and even across many lifetimes, the lessons still show up, albeit in a different form. So if you were to go back and say, oh, I had wish I had chosen this instead of that, well, the other choice you could have made would have still required you to learn these lessons. Meaning, you as a soul chose to finish up some very big things for yourself at this time. And you, you can think, oh, you know, well, maybe road A would have been easier than road B or road C. But every road would still have connected you with that energy, that lesson, and that healing. It just would have shown up in a different format or a different form. So try not to go into the past and replay too many things because the lessons would have shown up in a different form, in a different way. And that means at an even deeper layer, you're in agreement with what you're learning. You at a soul level are understanding that this needed to unfold so that you could see something, rise above it, and claim more power. And that doesn't make it easy. That doesn't make it quick. Uh, that doesn't remove the emotional layers involved, but that can help reconnect you with your sense of power when you can feel very powerless in some of these big life changes and loss and removal. So go back. And by going back, I'm actually thinking of this as going back to an energy point of neutrality. Like I'm seeing this neutral void of energy. It's presenting itself 
as a very beautiful sphere or, or bubble. And it's a neutral point of energy. It's a place of pure possibility, pure creation. Visualize yourself going back to that neutral point and understanding where you powerfully chose to complete something for yourself in the highest possible way. How you chose to complete a cycle, complete a lesson, complete a theme in your life that would ultimately reconnect you with more of your power to create next. So I'm now feeling like it's your free will and your mindset that is needing a lot of clearing right now. And that if you go back to this neutral point, you're going to have more clarity. And the thing about the neutral point is that there is no energy from the pain body, from the emotional body, or from the fear body. There's no other energies intruding on it. It's just pure light. It's pure love. It's pure unconditional love. So you're meant to reconnect with an unconditional love for yourself and everything you've been through. And I feel this over the past 12 years. And I feel it over the past five years. Like I'm getting this image of the past 12 years is the orange orange zone and the past five years is the red zone where maybe it's been the most intense in the past five years. So there is a neutrality zone where you step out of this present place of very deep transformation and you return to an energy of unconditional love and acceptance for yourself for what you didn't know. For what your ego chose, for what your lower consciousness chose, for what your soul chose for you to ultimately benefit from. And depending where you're at in the healing, because again, there's layers and layers of this, this hasn't been fast. It's like you can look back on other times in your life and you're like, wow, I got through something a lot faster than I did now. This has been that very slow step-by-step experience, which is the Capricorn domain of understanding the consequences, uh, the choices, the way you operated in the world. And now when you return to this neutrality sphere, neutral zone, I feel a lot gets energetically erased. It's like it gets removed because it's really fascinating. Um, Because it's required so much work and emotional clearing and even working with the body, healing the physical self, um, I've been feeling like there could be a lot in the body related to stress, anxiety, despair. Um, It's like the the digestive tract, the heart, just... Anxiety, wow, it it just, it feels like that's been some of the symptoms for some people is that it's like bracing yourself. You've been holding strong and holding tight that it's created a, um, like these areas of frozen energy in your body where something gets stuck and stagnant and you've had, you need to release that. You need to release it through exercise, 
uh, through acupuncture, through Reiki, through any kind of physical body treatment and support work that makes sure that your body is being refined so that you're not holding on to these energies, which can create illness and do further damage. Uh, there is an opening to un ensure the flow. Um, understand that there are many ways you can do this, uh, such as EFT tapping is very good for moving feelings and emotions through you. I recommend uh, Brad Yates on YouTube. He's excellent, uh, the EFT wizard. He helps you pinpoint certain emotions that you're meant to move through or work with and to reframe them, reprogram them. Um, anything that helps with Again, the stagnation. Um, I've talked about Jin Shin Jitsu, where you do the finger holds to move energy through your body. There's a Hono Pono Pono, where you practice forgiveness and love, unconditional love for yourself and others. Uh, they're simply going for a walk. Uh, I want you to know that you have choices around how to move this energy, and these things are all free. And yes, you can go to a professional and you can get support in other ways, but these are the things you can do for free uh, to work with your own energy. All of this is important right now for us because of the layers that have accumulated through these intense energies of the past five years and 12 years. And a lot about December is the release, is that letting go of I need to do what I can to allow myself a return to peace, a return to this loving, neutral place of self-acceptance. And then from there, you move forward. And then there's this boost of energy that helps you move forward. So it's a very interesting time right now. We are healing. This is very strong with the Chiron in Aries energy that is stationing direct on December 13th, and Chiron in Aries, Aries is the body, Aries is our sense of self, our self-identity, where we have felt wounded for being who we are, where we didn't feel seen or valued for existing, really, it's, I mean, that's a big statement, but that's really what it is, it's like Aries is that first initiation of life, here I am. And then we have wounds around how that was abused or harmed, uh, how it felt really crappy, how there were a part of us that didn't feel confident to be ourselves. So we're collectively healing all of this. But especially if the Chiron energy is really strong for you right now in your chart, then you really want to be conscious about how you move these energies through yourself. Now, we also have this support uh, coming through at this time that is raising us up above, raising us up above our own perceptions and our own energy fields. And this is that Sagittarius energy that I mentioned, where we go into a bigger belief, a bigger understanding of what's possible and who we are in the world. And then we also have the Capricorn energy that's requiring us to take responsibility for our energy right now. So I feel like there's a sense here of moving between what you are working with personally and intimately, but also staying open to the future and what you can't see and what you don't know and looking at how you walk in the world with trust, regardless of the hardships or challenges, regardless of what has shifted for you and changed for you permanently. Now, as I do this podcast, we have Venus conjunct Saturn and will be conjunct Pluto in the next few days. So the middle of this week, Venus in Capricorn, I feel as an energy of divine feminine graduation, of a maturity in the heart, a maturity in our sense of self, in our self-value, in our self-love. Uh, yes, it could have been a very difficult uh, through the ringer experience, but I feel this Venus as really getting a very strong backbone and a strengthening in her heart that supports 
her self-love. And this is where you take yourself seriously, you take your life seriously, you take your needs seriously, and you love yourself even more. And I feel that as this Venus makes a conjunction to Pluto on December 12th, especially the day of the Gemini full moon and the 12-12 portal, she is really deeply letting go of something that she was carrying for others. So please look at what you're carrying for others. And I'm getting the image of a backpack. And you know, you, you take off the backpack and you go through it and you look at the different pouches and, and corners of it and say, wait a minute, I didn't even know this was in here. What are you carrying for others that is not your responsibility? Because as Venus is conjunct Pluto, Pluto is about that deep transformation and a reconnection to what feels powerful now. In Capricorn, there's a sense of, well, I've had to do a lot for other people. I've had to show up. I've had to carry this. I've had to be that. And Capricorn can unconsciously have a lot of burdens, the weight of the world. But you have to take responsibility for how you agree to that. You said yes at some point. You said, yes, I'll do that for you. Yes, I'll pay that bill. Yes, I'll take care of that. Yes, yes, yes. And now we're looking at where we have to put up stronger boundaries and understand what is your responsibility and what is not. You are not responsible for carrying the world, paying everybody's bills. You are not responsible for everybody's happiness or for ensuring that they do what they have to do in their world. Uh, the energy of Capricorn is also a retraction. You, you take back what is your power. You take back your energy, but you understand that others also have that same ability to take responsibility for their life. And it's looking at where you don't need to get involved. You can step away, step back, step out of a dynamic, a uh, chaos, the drama, and basically refortify what is necessary for you at a whole new level. That's a big part of the energy of this of this week. Um, is your true priorities, your true responsibilities, and where you have overextended. Now, what's coming up as I say all this? Uh, is the energy of, of an old paradigm. Uh, I'm going to reference that this old paradigm is the savior paradigm that existed and started when the consciousness on the planet was so low that we only believed certain people had power. And of course, I'm getting, I'm seeing religious hierarchies right now, right? The priest had power or the Pope had power and others did not. And you had to go to someone else for redemption or to be heard or to be loved. Well, all of that is certainly falling away. It has been for a long time, but it's happening. It's like a quickening. It's happening even faster. And so you're understanding, no, I've always had power. I've always had my choices. I've always had the ability to do something. I didn't see it. I didn't know it. I've been learning about that. And so there's a changing paradigm here around what it means to support other people. Now, there's people in your life you will never change. They will never hear you. It doesn't matter how many times you say something or you write it or you express it. They will never hear you. It's almost as if you're speaking incompatible languages and you can spend a lot of time energy and effort trying to be heard and that is your ego that is your ego that is your desire to be validated by them for them to say oh you're so right or oh you're so correct now this can happen and we do this with other people in a very loving open-hearted way but when you're looking to be validated to be in control, to have more power. Uh, when, you're, when you're coming at it from the false ego, that is the savior energy. That is the sense that you are believing that your power is greater than another's. 
And at this time on the planet, we are all invited to rise in our power, to rise in our consciousness. But again, not everyone's going to do that. Uh, they won't do that for many lifetimes. They won't hear you. They don't want to change. Uh, they don't want you to be right. Uh, they don't care. Uh, and on and on the reasons go. And so this is where you have to step out of your own false ego that thinks you can save others or that it's your responsibility or that you have to correct them or that you have to do something that makes you more powerful or in control. Now, I know there's many layers of this, but what I'm feeling is that it's part of the restructuring of Capricorn. And we have Pluto in Capricorn and Saturn in Capricorn, which is understanding where you have responsibility for your life and power over your life. But where is that excessive or where is that not really in? It's not in alignment with another person's free will. And this is a time of honoring their free will, honoring what others are choosing, being in acceptance, stepping away and saying, okay, I respect your choice. I respect your direction. I respect what you're wanting to do. And I also deeply respect myself. I respect my energy. I respect what I need. I respect who I am. I respect what I want. And that's what I have to follow. So be aware of these different power dynamics that can be under the surface and very unconscious. And of course, as I say this, I now get the image of a family and how we're raised in a family with uh, power dynamics uh, that start when you're younger. But then as you become an adult and you become your own person, you know, you have your own life, you have your own dreams, you have your own everything. Uh, I remember, you know, when my son was first born and People would ask my husband, oh, do you have big dreams for him? And all these questions. And my husband's like, he's going to have his own dreams. He's, he's going to have his own things that he wants to do in life. It's not my job. It's, it, I, it's not my role, I should say, to, to, to tell him what his dreams are. But it's allowing him to be his own autonomous being. And as each person is empowered to be their own autonomous being, then they step into their power, they're in alignment with their energy, and they're able to create the life that they are choosing and they are directing. So I hope that this helps understand why it's important for relationships to change right now. And this is part of Venus, conjunct Saturn, conjunct Pluto. Um, this is part of rising above and honoring your energy and who you are. This is also part of the south node in Capricorn and releasing ourselves from these unconscious burdens and energies we've been carrying that stemmed from our false responsibilities, false responsibilities that could genuinely come from a good place, by the way, and not to say that it's bad intentioned at all. It can very much come from a very good, kind, loving place, but step back and step away if that's what serves you best. Now, Mars is very strong over this next week. We have Mars and Scorpio trining Neptune and Pisces uh, December 11th through the 13th. Then Mars is going to sextile Saturn in Capricorn at 19 degrees December 17th through the 19th. Then Mars and Scorpio sextiles Pluto in Capricorn at 22 degrees on December 21st to 23rd. So the strong Mars and Scorpio energy is very much about in alignment with the passionate areas of your life and, and what you're ready to move towards. Especially when Mars syncs up with these outer planets, Neptune, Saturn, and Pluto, there is something that gets locked in. And you're meant to follow what feels right for you, what feels powerful, where you feel that urge of, I have to do this. The Scorpio energy can be all or nothing. And so you can feel uh, a very deep calling to do something right now, whether that is, you know, a project, an activity, something in your world, something in your life, uh, anything with your body, of course, when Mars is involved. But there's a sense of, I have to do this. And I don't care at all about that. So there can be a decisive energy here. 
as we move through the middle of December that you're meant to trust, trusting yourself, trusting what feels so strong for you. And I also feel like this is movement forward. Uh, when Mars comes through and makes these beneficial aspects to the outer planets, things lock in. And there is movement, there's energy, there's a sense of finally something is going, a, a project, an idea, um, anything that you're working on with other people, anything that you're looking to do out in the world, uh, there's a sense of what are my resources, what is the plan, what is the strategy, this is great for business development. And you might feel that right now, that things that have been percolating or were slow to manifest or slow to come about, they click the middle of December. And it's like finally people have some new clarity and people have some new understanding of where they want to go. So this very strong Mars energy is motivating. It's going to keep us very busy and focused on what we are directing our energy towards. So certainly make the most of it um, if you're feeling this. It's especially beneficial for the water signs and the earth signs because now you're going to get that surge of it's time, it's time, it's time. The other strong energies that we have going on right now involve turning point themes. So turning a corner, turning the page, uh, stepping into new priorities that are ready for your attention. I'm getting a boost. It's like something gets boosted and there is, there is this understanding that you had to move through a step-by-step -step process and now there is yes moments. Jupiter in Capricorn is trining Uranus in Taurus retrograde through the middle of this month, and I would call it about the 13th through the 16th. This is happening in the Earth signs. And this is happening in a way that connects the dots, uh, the Earth signs being our physical reality, uh, things showing up, money coming through, contracts being signed, agreements being made. This can be unexpected developments, because of that Uranus energy, but energetically, it's a reflection of what you now value, of what matters to you now, and then Jupiter and Capricorn brings in the plan, the understanding of how to make it come together. There's a sense that, okay, things are shaping up for my next business. Uh, that's very strong Capricorn energies. My next business endeavor, my next direction, my next life chapter, and there is something here that we're meant to connect to because it's taking us ahead. It's taking us further. And as I say that, I'm getting the image of a leapfrog that if you're able to say yes to a new chapter, a new start, to take a risk, you it's this leapfrog energy that's helping you move forward faster than if you were to resist or drag your feet if you didn't believe it was possible, then you would be taking a slower path. But if you say, yes, I'm ready. I don't know all the details or all the particulars, but I know it's going to come together. This is literally that leap of faith. And then it's where God's source spirit, the universe, shows up to follow your energy lead, to follow your intention. So I feel that this big energy of the middle of December here is helping us move into some new beginnings and new starts in January and next year. But there's also this, I'm seeing this new foundation, but it's a platform, a higher platform that you've been climbing up to and this higher platform, if you stand up here and you see the view and you see where you've been and you see what you've come from and it might seem like this platform is all you have if a lot has fallen away and been removed, 
But this is the platform that you then leap from. And then I'm getting the image of a zip line. And it's simply going for it. Going for what could even be like the only choice. You could say, well, there's nowhere else to go. Um, so that is actually a gift. The universe is saying, this is the best direction for you. Trust this and understand how it's time and you're supported. Because I feel like for so many people, there's just been these permanent endings. You, you know you can't go back and you don't want to. And it's been brutal and it's been hard. But there's been this rising spiritual growth in you. So many people have awakened over the past few years, especially, and you've awakened to bigger universal themes and understandings. That could be why you listen to this podcast, for example. And maybe you don't know much about astrology, but there's something about these messages that just sync up with your life. Uh, That is an awakening. There's a sense that you are open to more than what you thought was possible. And even, even like you didn't have a choice, it was, it was kind of like that frantic, give me anything, give me anything. I just want to understand what the heck is happening. This is a time of solidifying who you are now at a whole new level of your being. And it's standing on this platform and allowing yourself to move forward that is a huge gift. I'm feeling like for some people, you still have contracts, responsibilities, legal issues, things that are requiring you to stay in line or walk a certain way, um, almost like you would love to cut the cord, you would love to be totally done with this, but you can't. You're still connected to something that's going to be playing out. Um, For many of you, this could last for another few years or so. But it's going to energetically shrink where it could have caused a lot of your energy in the past year or two years where there was just a lot involved, but it's going to like kind of shrink. Like some of the wrinkles will be ironed out and you'll have other areas to direct your attention to. So instead of something taking up 80% of your energy, it'll just take up 30%, but you still have to tend to it. You still have responsibilities. Like I'm seeing families, I'm seeing children, I'm seeing um, business stuff, like I'm seeing stuff just tied together and it's not like you can just step away from all that. I'm seeing that many people are involved Uh, and I'm seeing that there's a lot you've had to learn. Um, Me too, by the way, (laughs) like please know that I'm totally in on this stuff too. I've had big stuff I've been learning. So, you know, we're walking this path together. It's, it's not like there's anybody on a ivory tower who has it all sorted out. You know, we're all walking it together, but that's why I feel, um, so motivated and why I love doing this work because I receive messages that I need to. And I know that many of you do as well. And that we're all, you know, doing our very best with these big energies, these big themes. And we're also rising up and supporting one another as we go. You're not alone. You know, you're not the only one, even though you might look around in your life and you're like, oh, I'm the only one here doing all this. Um, But you are connected to millions of other people around the planet who are also moving through these same energies. And it can be very calming to know that the shifts are happening and we can't rush them. There's no way it could have been rushed. So we are turning a chapter and it's not 
only because it's December. It's because of these eclipses that are coming. It's because of the new energies that are pouring in in 2020. Um, there's meant to be a time of endings, and those are to be honored. And that's so that you can be ready for the beginnings, which are also to be honored. You know, spirit, source, God, the universe is very neutral about the energies and it's our choice and our intention that drives them. So what are you choosing about this time? And what are you choosing to honor yourself even more? Because I feel that part of standing strong on this new platform is the energy you now feel in your heart for yourself. Huge self-acceptance has come through this time. Huge self-acceptance. And I mean loving who you are, understanding who you are in a whole new way. Because many of you are here to be the spiritual leaders. In fact, you've always been a leader in your life, uh, whether that's through initiating something in your own spiritual growth or with your family, um, initiating something in at work, um, doing something new, you know, understanding a lot of different spiritual modalities or energy healing, et cetera, et cetera. Um, what I remember from one of the clients I worked with, she's this very beautiful soul, as many, many, many millions of you are. And she came in with access to many different gifts. And that's what I find with many healers and light workers and leaders at this time is that you came in with so many gifts and talents more than the average person and you came in to do many things okay it's kind of like you know perhaps um your your parents you know had one job that they did all their life or you thought you would be doing one role all of your life but you can do many things and so you fulfilled a part of your own soul contract with yourself to see something through, to learn something, whether that is in business or personal or family or spiritually, whatever it might be, uh, the karmic stuff, the energetic stuff, all of that. You, you, you fulfilled something that you were meant to understand about your own capabilities and your own strengths, but you have access to all these other talents and gifts. And so for this one client, I saw it as a rainbow of colors. And she had all these rainbows of colors, you know, of like all this beautiful green and awesome reds and warm oranges and yellows and blues and purples and so on. But people in her family could only see the primary colors. They could only see red, yellow, blue. Do this, do this, do this. That's all they could see. That's all they could identify. That That's all they were able to see in her. And so she felt wildly unseen. It hurt her heart. Uh, it hurt her sense of self and her confidence. It hurt her ability to do her work. And so what we energetically did is say, well, listen, you have access to so many more colors to play with in yourself. And so understand and accept that they can only see red, yellow, blue, and let yourself be at peace with that. Don't ask them to change because that's not something you have any control over or any power over. Understand that you might only have certain conversations with them, for example. I feel like this is important because of the holidays, you know, when you travel to meet people or catch up with friends or there's awkward certain social situations. You know you can only have certain conversations with people about certain topics. That's just playing it smart. You know, that, that isn't meant to be something that you stress about. So you're like, okay, we can only talk about red, yellow, or blue. And you know that, and that's your wisdom. And you use that to benefit you. You use that to benefit them, to keep the energy as peaceful as possible. But what I feel is essential is that then you go back and you honor all the colors you have, all the things you're curious about, all of your gifts, all of your abilities that you're interested in and, and what you want to do and what you want to play with, you know, that's where you love yourself. That's this Venus energy restructuring within us. That's the rising of the divine feminine where you source your love from within. You source your un 
unconditional love for self from within you. And, you know, you say, wow, I didn't realize I loved painting. I didn't realize I could do this awesome energy work. I didn't realize that I'm also really good with finances and numbers. And, wow, look at all the amazing things I'm good at. It's this understanding that you can be good at many, many things. And that's because at a spiritual level, many of you came in with this ability to go the marathon. That when something ended, when one job ended, one title, whenever, you had other things to source from. You had other ways to express yourself, creativity, uh, with creativity. You had other ways to manifest something next. And you're meant to honor and love this in yourself. And there can be downtimes around that. Um, I remember when I was going through a huge transition in my life, I volunteered a lot. And I, I tend to do that when I can. Uh, but I volunteered and I became certified as an ESL teacher. And I would go to teach uh, English as a second language to adult international uh, international adults uh, with families. And I learned how to be a better teacher. And what that looks like for different levels of understanding and competency. And sometimes it would be very basic teaching and I would sit down with three women and we would talk about different colors and I would have to think, okay, how do I teach different colors in English? Um, Or how do we talk about the crazy English language and all the idioms and all the things that don't make sense about English? How do you teach that? So there was, there's things that you learn by volunteering or by trying something new, by seeing how good you are at this or at that. And that's really important as well for many of you that as something is ending or it's been really hard, you you don't give up your spirit. You don't give up on who you are. And of course, volunteering is that beautiful two-way energy exchange where you're helping another on their path. Um, But just stay open to what is calling to you. Even if it's soft or loud, it's something that you you have access to. And I feel like that's going to help fill in some of these holes and even return you to your faith in new beginnings or what's next, but also your faith in yourself, that you'll figure it out, things will connect, things will come together. So the astrology is quite big in understanding who you are now, your mastery, your capabilities, your possibilities. And I'm going to leave it at that. Um, As I said, there will be another podcast on December 13th talking about the second half of December astrology. And then I'll be back next week uh, with more healing podcasts and the weekly update for you. But I hope that whatever transpires for you over this next week, you really feel a strength in yourself that perhaps you haven't felt for a while but that also reminds you of your own ability to keep going and all the possibilities that await that you just can't see yet, but they are coming together. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, If you want to learn more about the January 2020 astrology, I'm now offering monthly webinars that go through the astrology of the month ahead. Uh, This is great for planning purposes, for your birthday month, for understanding the big energies, of course, of January. Uh, That information is below this podcast. And you can find out more about me and my offerings at mollymccord.online as well as consciouscoolchic.com. Thank you so much, and I look forward to connecting with you again soon through another podcast episode.